Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Blair Adams. I'm a manager with the Disability Services Division of Alberta Human Services. It's my pleasure to welcome you to today's Alberta Brain Injury Initiative webinar. This is the final in a series of four sessions to raise awareness about brain injury and the supports available for, in Alberta for survivors and their caregivers. Today's webinar will focus on the services that are available for survivors of a brain injury. I will start the session with a quick overview of the programs that the Government of Alberta funds. We'll then hear from four service providers serving Albertans around the province. The organizations include the Brain Care Centre located in Edmonton, Blue Hair and Support Services Association located in various offices in Northern Alberta, the Canadian Mental Health Association located in Red Deer, and the Southern Alberta Brain Injury Society located in Calgary. Please share your thoughts and questions via the live chat window as you watch their presentations. Tina Fays is our online moderator and she'll pose your web chat questions to each of our guests. I will now give you a brief overview of the Alberta Brain Injury Initiative and the services that are provided through the Alberta Brain Injury Network's 14 service providers. The Alberta Brain Injury Initiative has been around for about 15 years. Its objective is to offer consistent and province-wide supports to survivors with an acquired brain injury so they can live, work, and participate in their communities. Support is offered through two types of services, service coordination and outreach, and the support for community living service. Service coordination and outreach support survivors of an acquired brain injury to become as independent as possible by helping them develop their own personal support network. Survivors of an acquired brain injury can be referred to the service provider by their family doctor, a hospital, a family member, or they can contact the service provider themselves to request services. Service coordination service providers are located across Alberta. The service provider can help individuals reconnect to their services and supports they need such as health care, budgeting assistance, and housing assistance. They will help the survivor learn more about their brain injury, provide counseling to help the survivor and their family or support network understand the brain injury, and provide strategies to help survivors get back to their job or activities they previously enjoyed. Service providers also provide education in communities about brain injuries and its effect on a person and help people understand how they can support survivors. The Support for Community Living Service program is available when a brain injury survivor is ready to learn and practice the specific skills they need to live as independently as possible. Program service providers may work with the survivor to relearn how to grocery shop, how to take the bus, or how to budget. Services are individualized to what the individual or survivor may need. The Alberta Brain Injury Initiative supports about 2,500 adults through the Alberta Brain Injury Network, 14 service providers across the province. To be eligible, you must be 18 years or older. Your injury can have happened when you were under the age of 18. It could be diagnosed or you may suspect that you have an acquired brain injury. You must need supports and services to participate in the community and your guardian can provide consent to be part of the program or you can provide consent as well. If you want to participate in the Support for Community Living Service program, you also need to be living in your home without overnight paid support. And it should be likely that you will be able to reach your independent living goals within two years of service. Today's webinar will provide you with specific information about the additional services and supports provided by the Brain Injury Initiative service providers. A list of service providers can be found at humanservices.alberta.ca backslash brain injury. If you're in need of supports because of an acquired brain injury, please contact the closest service provider to you to discuss how they may be of help. I now would like to introduce our first presenter. Michelle Hill is a service coordinator with Blue Hair and Support Services. She has been living in Northern Alberta for 10 years. She started with Blue Heron four years ago as a service coordinator for the Alberta Brain Injury Network. With a background in business, she says the career change has been rewarding and fulfilling. If you have any questions for Michelle as you watch her presentation, please post them in the live chat window. She will take your questions after her presentation. I now hand it off to Michelle. Uh, as Blair mentioned, I am Michelle Hill and I do live in High Prairie and I'm a service coordinator with Blue Heron Support Services. 
Today we're going to talk a little bit about coordinating services in northern Alberta. Um, just bear with me here. Um, we've been asked to provide just a brief overview of how we assist our survivors and caregivers as well as touch upon uh, the unique partnerships and challenges that we do face in our region. So this will be more from a rural perspective versus an urban perspective. As you can see, there's a big map of Alberta. Um, we serve the north areas uh, in the northeast and northwest regions. The ones with the blue stars are the communities that we serve as well as the surrounding areas. So a little bit of uh, widespread, so we do spend a lot of time traveling, but get to see lots of the north, which is great. We're going to speak a little bit more about referral to the program. Blair touched upon it a little bit. Um, as he indicated, in order to be a part of this program, you do need to be referred. But the good news is a referral can come from any source. It can be a self-referral. Any agency can refer, your doctor, a family member, or a friend. Um, as Blair did mention, we do need confirmation of brain injury you do need to be an adult and another key piece is is you need to be a willing participant of the program we do have family members that contact us and feel that their loved one would be a great candidate for this but sometimes the timing isn't right and they're not ready for the support which is okay we'll you know not take them on at that point in time but maybe in a six months time they're in a better place and are willing to uh, offer our service or access our services at that time. So once you are um, part of the program, we look at coordinating some services. And in regards to coordinating services, um, there it, it there's a number of ways that we can do this. It really is dependent upon the client's needs at the time as well as their goals. So one way that we do offer support is we look to other agencies. We, need, we may need to make a referral to AISH or Mental Health or social, social Housing, just to name a few. For example, somebody might be suffering from some depression. So a referral to Mental Health will be made at that time so they can get the appropriate counseling. At times, a client is also referred to a program being offered in the community. There might be a health workshop that might benefit them, or a literacy course, or even an anger management course. There's, it's really dependent from area to area as to what program we can refer. And again, it depends on the client's needs. In addition, a client may benefit from a support worker through the Supports to communi Community Living program that Blair spoke about. In our area, it is the service coordinator's responsibility to oversee this program, so we'll work with the support worker as well as the client in regards to that. Service coordinators in our area also offer support groups. These types do vary from community to community. Uh, for example, we have a walking club in one area. There's a focus group offered in another one. Uh, another community has a support group specific to caregivers. Each support group has been developed based on the needs and demands of the clients within that area. So really, there is no master calendar of events that we have. It just does vary from area to area, so it's best to just speak to your service coordinator. If you're feeling a really a certain area that you want support in, we'll look at developing a support group and see if there's others out there that could benefit from it. So helping our clients and caregivers does require a combination often of one or all of the above as well as a whole bunch of other means. This is just a real quick, brief overview as to how we provide support, coordinate services. It doesn't mean that it's all-encompassing. 
Also, we do work closely with our clients. Just because we may refer you to another agency doesn't mean that we stop working with you. Uh, support is ongoing. And another key piece in providing that support is partnerships. We build, try and build partnerships with agencies within each town and community. In the rural centers, there can be a lack of resources, especially brain injury specific. So we have to work with those agencies that do exist, come up with some creative solutions, and collaboratively do our best to fill the gaps and make sure your needs are met. One way of building these partnerships is through interagency meetings. Now these meetings typically take place once a month or bi-monthly depending on the area. And really it's just an opportunity of the organizations that are in that town to come together, talk about what they do, and um, if they have any specific events or programs that are coming up, it's an opportunity to let everybody know what's going on. And from that, informed referrals can be made and we start forming partnerships and working together as a community. One other thing that we do do is prevention initiatives. Uh, these are possible due to partnerships. Initiatives such as bike rodeos, a party program, helmet safety presentations. If it wasn't through the joint efforts and partnerships such as Alberta Health Services or Office of Traffic Safety or the local RCMP, um, probably a lot of these events wouldn't be possible. Just a service coordinator of one in our town, it's really hard and difficult to do all of those things. Now just I'm sure other networks face challenges. We do face a few barriers. I'm not really sure if they're unique or specific to our area, but uh, it is something that we have to work with our clients and overcome. I would say the number one being transportation. Transportation, transportation, or shall I say lack of transportation. There really is no public transportation in the vast majority of the areas that we work in. So it can really pose a barrier for a client to even get to a doctor's appointment right within their own town if they have no means of travel. What we do is we work with our clients, we try and help them build a strong support network through family, through friends, if they have a church that they go to, draw on volunteers through the church and to really overcome the transportation barrier. The other one being geography. The reality is in the northern regions, there's long distances between some communities and available resources. One might have to travel hours just to see a specialist. And sometimes they outweigh the travel time versus the benefit of going to that specialist and they may choose not to go. Thankfully, technology nowadays is uh, overcoming this barrier through webcasts as these today or telehealth sessions. Clients can find out about more information. They even connect with specialists via telehealth that um, wasn't possible before. As mentioned earlier, there can be some inconsistent and limited resources in our communities. Um, in reality, it's not realistic or economically feasible to have absolutely every resource available in absolutely every community. So with that, some agencies offer limited hours, sporadic hours, and sometimes non-existent hours. So in those situations, obviously it can be somewhat inconvenient and pose a bit of a barrier for our clients, but we work closely with them Quite often the service coordinator becomes that support until they can access that specific resource. Even though we do face some difficulties in the north um, through working closely with our agencies and with our clients, become a little creative, have a lot of determination, rest assured support is there and will be given. 
for those of you out there today, if you are interested in getting more information about our program, you can contact our head office, which is in blue, it, which is in Barhead, um, and the phone number is on the screen there. And I do believe if there are any questions, we can answer them at the end if anybody thinks of anything. And thank you very much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you very much for really emphasizing the importance of uh, partnerships and uh, collaboration in uh, the rural area. The next presenter I'd like to introduce you to is uh, Michael Ryan. Michael has been a client service manager with the Brain Care Centre for the past eight years and during this time he has developed a comprehensive understanding of the issues um, related to brain injury and stroke survivors. He's very interested in building organizational capacity at the Brain Care Centre to better serve survivors. Mike will take your questions after a session so please share your thoughts and questions Mike via the, the live chat. Thank you Mike. Thank you very much Blair. Um, I appreciate this opportunity to present on Brain Care Centre's services this afternoon. So. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what Brain Care Centre does to serve clients with acquired brain injury. I'll first touch on a little bit about the history of Brain Care Centre, our funding. I'll give a brief overview of the intake process. Some of it you've heard already from uh, Michelle. It's very, very similar. Um, and then I'll give a brief outline of our client uh, services, uh, the, the totality of our client services. And then I'll conclude with some of our newer initiatives. So without further ado, I, I'll dive right into the history of Brain Care Centre. Brain Care Centre is the result of an amalgamation in 2011 of uh, two other uh, brain injury service providers. That is, Navis, the Northern Alberta Brain Injury Society, and Ebers, the Edmonton Brain Injury Relearning Society. Um, it, Navis covered the uh, uh, service coordination piece that uh, Michelle and Blair touched on, and also uh, supportive counselling, and Ebers covered life skill classes, occupational therapy um, programming, as well as uh, electronic uh, compensatory device training. <coughs> I think with this merger, what we now is have is a, a, a comprehensive totality of services that clients can access. I think that's uh, very beneficial. I think in the past, you could have uh, with neighbors and Ebers, and you may have SELS involved as well, and any other service providers that were there supporting the client. That a client could find that definitely overwhelming. So now they can come to Brain Care Centre and get uh, quite an extensive uh, a number of services in one area and they can I identify names with faces and I think that's much more uh, emotionally uh, 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 positive for our clients. Um, we, just to touch on as well, we have a satellite office in Edson and that provides uh, service provision to uh, the Edson, Hinton, Drayton Valley and Jasper regions. Um, so I'm just going to talk now about the intake process. So as Blair touched on, we, we, we provide services to clients that are 18 years of age and older. Um, in terms of referrals, so we do get a bulk of our referrals from uh, the Glenrose Hospital, but also Halver Johnson. We get referrals as well from family doctors. But it's important to note as well that uh, the persons can self-referral if they, if they feel the need. Um, what we do require, of course, is uh, documentation of brain injury. So please, uh, if you're thinking about uh, a self-referral, or referring a loved one, make sure that you acquire that uh, documentation uh, beforehand. Um, so what would happen then is the intake coordinator would uh, uh, obtain the consents for release of information. Uh, then we would uh, work on uh, setting up a file for the client. The file would then, in consult, the intake coordinator would consult with the management and the file would then be assigned to the service coordinator. Um, so just, I'm just going to touch briefly on our contracts. So we, we have four contracts. Three of them are with uh, human services, and one is through Alberta Health Services. So I'll just attach the contract to the client services that I'm uh, describing so you get a better sense of how we're, we're funded. So service coordination is funded by human services. They act as the case managers, as Michelle had touched on. Uh, they meet with the client, and they develop an individual service plan. They provide education and advocacy. Uh, they complete referrals to the appropriate resources. So there could be internal resources, that is, within Brain Care Centre. So it could be to our occupational therapist. It could be to our uh, uh, supportive counselling team. Uh, it could be to the volunteer program. 
could be the uh, assistive device training program, or it could be externally, so it could be to supports for community living services. Um, coordinators also work to obtain housing and funding for clients. Um, then we have our community living program, so that's we, what we refer to as our uh, assistive device training program. The focus here is the uh, usage of electronic compensatory devices. So what would happen is a, a service, the service coordinator in the I, meeting with the in, uh, client to develop the individual service plan, if a uh, technology, uh, compensatory technology need was identified, the service coordinator would refer to that program, the community living program. And then the facilitator would work with that person to develop skills with uh, the assistive device, so an iPad or a tablet. And frequently we get a lot of clients that are, uh, have communication issues and memory issues, so she would teach them to use the apps on the device and then uh, to enable her to, or enable the client to apply that, that uh, app, app in the community. So we, a person with, say, a expressive aphasia couldn't communicate in the community, uh, and therefore that would be very, very frustrating. Uh, but now with the assistive device training and applying the app in the community, the person uh, thereby is able to increase his or her independence and thus her quality of life. We also offer within that uh, program uh, life skill classes. So right now we have identity theft and we have uh, um, internet safety. Um, uh, clients also come in if they're not compu computer savvy and they just want to learn how to use the computer and access the internet and uh, know how to send emails. And from there we've got uh, our CAPCC program. So this is a little bit of a uh, kink in the programming here. It's run out of our Edson office. It's uh, the acronym CAPCC stands for Community Access for Persons in Continuing Care and it's also funded by Human Services. Uh, the people that are uh, eligible to enter the program are persons ages 18 to 65 that are in long-term care facilities. So it is a cross-disability service. We do have some persons that have brain injury, but we also have serve clients that have uh, other uh, disabilities. The key, again, is being in the long-term care center and uh, experiencing uh, social and emotional isolation. Uh, now I'm going to go from there into uh, the programs that are funded by our Alberta Health Services contract. So we've got the Community uh, Rehabilitation Program. That's funded by our, uh, that's again funded by Alberta Health Services and it's an OT driven program. So the occupational therapist would focus on life skills return, cognitive rehabilitation, return to productive activity, so helping clients get into vocational or pre-vocational placements and also perceptual rehabilitation. So the occupational therapist would work with a client that, say, would have uh, visual perception deficits. So he would work with that person to identify the uh, perception deficit and then would put in compensatory strategies to help that person to navigate his or her environment, thereby, again, increasing uh, quality of life and uh, independence. Uh, so again, uh, during the ISP process, we go back to the service coordination as kind of the linchpin service the coordinator would identify some of these uh, needs in the in, uh, during the ISP intake process and a referral would go to the OT to address those types of specific issues. Uh, we have a supportive counseling and uh, support facilitation and counseling service also funded by Alberta Health Services. So we provide one-to-one -one counseling and uh, group counseling for clients and caregivers. Uh, we offer psychosocial support groups. We have a women's group, we have a men's group, uh, we have caregiver groups. Uh, additionally, we provide life skill classes and uh, a class called Understanding Brain Injury for our clients. Um, there's also memory and, and attention and self-esteem and coping with emotions are also other life skill classes that we provide. That's just a sliver of what I'm telling you right now is just a sliver of the life skill classes that we provide. So if people have curiosity about them, they can go to the website www.braincarecenter.com and look them up or get a copy of our newsletter and you'll find a very comprehensive description of the uh, life skill classes there, or you can call the office. Um, we've got our volunteer program, so uh, the volunteer coordinator would, uh, tends to recruit uh, volunteers for our special events, so we have our fundraisers like our gala or a golf tournament. Also, we uh, have volunteer contribution to our newsletter. Um, within the volunteer program, there's a program known as the Leisure Companion Program, in which the volunteer coordinator would, would uh, uh, ma match clients with uh, uh, persons that were interested in, in being their companions. So if a client uh, was experiencing some type of isolation and would like to say get out to go to the gym, she, uh, that client would, would be matched with a leisure companion who would take them out into the community and uh, get them into a gym program. 
That would be one example, and there are many other examples of how it kind of rolls out. And again, th these referrals would come from service coordination, just so you understand how the, the service flow kind of works. Uh, we have public education as well, so our staff uh, take turns at providing public education. Our core presentation is the Brain Basics uh, education uh, presentation, and it goes into detail regarding the symptoms of uh, brain injury and the management strategies for brain injury. It tends to be geared towards professionals and caregivers, so we've got understanding brain injury for the clients. This uh, Brain Basics, again, geared much more towards the community service providers and, and, and caregivers. Uh, some of our newer programs, I'll just touch on those. Um, the concussion program, conceptually it's been in existence for about two years now, but we're, we're rolling it out uh, much more efficiently within the last year, I would say. We're still fine-tuning it, however. So that would be uh, one of the newer programs, uh, different from the core programs that we provide. Uh, it's kind of divided into three arms, if you will. We've got the post-concussion management and support program. So we admit into that program two clients per month. Uh, they're provided with multidisciplinary supports, that is occupational therapy, supportive counseling, and uh, service coordination. Uh, the criteria is that the client can be no greater than 12 months uh, post-concussion. They're given uh, quality of life assessments pre and post. So they enter the program, a quality of life assessment is given. The minute they're done the service, a uh, quality of life post-assessment is uh, administered as well. Uh, we have a research pro portion to that program, so we're currently collaborating with Dr. Marty Mrazek and Dr. Brian Rowe from the uh, University of Alberta Hospital, um, just regarding the best uh, research for best practices for concussion management. So that, that's a still an evolving relationship, and we're, we're continuing to get feedback from those two uh, very uh, learned gentlemen. Um, and then we have uh, the concussion outreach program. This is really brand new. Uh, we hired a, a concussion outreach facilitator in uh, October. And uh, the concussion outreach facilitator provides education to the community with regard to concussion awareness and prevention and symptom management. Uh, she also educates minor league sports teams to administer the uh, post-concussion assessment and cognitive uh, test, the so-called impact tool. Um, what she would do is she would identify a person on the team, like a personal uh, trainer on the team, a hockey team, for instance, uh, train that person to do the initial baseline testing on the team and then to do the follow-up testing on any players that were concussed during the course of the season. So that's uh, a, a part of our program which is really evolving very, very quickly. She's, ne she's a splendid networker, this uh, young lady, and uh, she has in fact now been uh, working or networking with the Edmonton Oilers and will actually do some testing for their participants in their spring and summer hockey schools. So that's a very new development. And then one fin final development for us would be the uh, RV program. So we are, uh, Brain Care Centre is a member of the uh, Edmonton uh, Interagency Committee for Brain Injury and uh, Stroke. And the committee identified that the uh, Edmonton area does not have a rehabilitation service comparable to RB in Calgary, RB meaning the Association for the Rehabilitation of the Brain Injured. So uh, in partnership with the Interagency, uh, Brain Care Centre is currently developing a business plan uh, which we will look to uh, submit to funders. So the business plan rough copy will be completed by the end of May, and then you know we'll look at uh, fine-tuning it and uh, for submission to funders. Now I recognize that the economic climate isn't the best right now. However, uh, some points could, can be made about this program is that I think it would have a very positive effect on uh, helping the service flow through the uh, healthcare system. That is, persons that. Uh, are kind of uh, languishing in hospitals now, there would be an opportunity with, if this program becomes viable, they could uh, be discharged into the community for follow-up intensive rehabilitation services, which I think would have a positive effect on the flow through the health system. And additionally, also for the flow through, uh, 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 client flow through the designated assisted living facilities, uh, clients that uh, may otherwise be assigned to designated assisted living facilities if they get these intensive rehabilitation treatments, that is occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, speech and language pathology, recreation therapy. If they get, if they get that early enough and intensively enough, uh, you know, perhaps those persons can then become functionally independent and thereby will be able to live alone and thus not have to go into a, an assisted living facility. And that would then open the door uh, up for those people who actually need and require the service. So that's basically uh, what we're doing in a nutshell, and I would be pleased to you know, field any questions from the public uh, when uh, they may have them, and uh, if I can't answer them, I'll 
direct you to our website. Thank you, Mike. Um, I actually do have one question for you from the web, um, web chat. Um, the question is, are there any opportunities for youth transitioning into adult services to access the supports you were talking about prior to age 18 as a way to kind of assist them into with the transition, basically? I think that uh, we have been in consultation with our funders, so we've talked to Blair um, at, at various points about uh, uh, providing a transition service for those clients right on the cusp of that age 18. And uh, we have uh, had approval. So there's one cli client recently that was uh, right on that cusp, 17, 18, that we, uh, we talked to the funder about and we decided that we'd start uh, the, that uh, beginning flow-in service into the uh, general brain injury population. So we are starting to do some of that. But again, it's on a case-by-case -case ba basis and we'd want to look at getting the approval first. Wonderful. Thank you. Now we'd like to introduce you to our third presenter. Uh, our presenter is Jen Abu Elba. She is a program supervisor with the Canadian Mental Health Association in Red Deer. Jen has been working with the Alberta Brain Injury Network for the past four years and has worked as an SEL worker and a service coordinator and now a program supervisor. Jen's area of interests are community relations and building community capacity. She enjoys the work that she does as everyday presents new opportunities to learn and grow. Please share your thoughts and questions for Jen via the live chat window, and she'll have a few minutes at the end of the presentation to answer your questions. Welcome, Jen. Thanks, Blair. Um, hi, everyone. So, I, as Blair mentioned, I am from Red Deer. Um, so, in in Red Deer, in the central region, we cover um, a, a pretty vast area. So, we cover from the Saskatchewan border all the way to the BC border, as far south. Um, to Didsbury and north to Wetaskiwin. So that kind of creates some, some unique experiences for us in our region. Um, we're a little bit unique as well due to the fact that um, the brain injury network in the central region is a collaboration. So we have six service coordinators, uh, three of which um, work out of the Canadian Mental Health Association. Um, one is in a satellite office in Camrose, and then three that work out of uh, the Catholic Social Services Office in Red Deer. Um, so we also have uh, an in-house SCL worker, which is again qu kind of unique for us. So that provides us the opportunity to um, support the SCL worker and and kind of tweak the goals as needed throughout throughout the program. Um, like the, in the other regions, we re receive our referrals from various sources, uh, from hospitals, from uh, family members from other agencies as well as self-referrals um, so we're not particular and uh, we even take walk-ins so if you have some concerns and you're running into some challenges you can walk through our door and we will start providing you some supports as, as soon as possible um, so the because we cover all of that central region um, we, the majority of our visits with our clients and the people we serve are in their homes or in their uh, small rural centers. So that, that can be a little bit interesting as well. Um, we try to make sure that, again, because it's such a large area that we cover, that we are out in, that, that in those communities at least every six to eight weeks um, so that we're connecting and providing those supports as much as possible. Um, and sometimes if the needs are there, we're out there every couple of weeks. The service coordinators, as has been touched on before, they connect with the clients and work on the goals that are identified by the folks that they want to work on, whatever their priorities might be. That can be things like um, locating income, applying for um, housing supports, um, working through legal challenges, looking for transportation supports, um, you know, it, whatever their goal might be, we're pretty flexible within our program at, at figuring out what kind of supports we can offer and making sure that those are very client focused. Um, we also will provide supports to the family members. This is, with a brain injury, that creates quite a bit of a challenge for the family members as well. There are some drastic role changes. So we provide supports to the family members as well and help them learn how to work through these role changes. Um, and again, as, as touched on, the SCL within our region looks a little bit different. Um, 
So because we cover such a large area, we can't, uh, the SCL, we have to contract out to the agencies that are in those areas. Um, in, in the smaller centers, we aren't always the experts on, on what the services are or what's available in their area. So we will contract out to agencies within those areas to provide that extra support. So the SCL in our region looks like um, providing supports with kind of some of those more intensive goals that if the service coordinator can't be there as frequently, they need someone to come into the home and, and assist them working on those goals. Um, so we would contract to an agency within those communities. So some of those goals, again, would look like working on rehab homework, um, creating a schedule and getting into a routine, um, kind of, again, whatever those more intensive goals look like, and then providing that support to, to kind of get back on your feet and increase your independence again. Um, so I, like in the North region, it's similar for us that those um, SCL supports are contracted through us. So in order to access those more intensive supports, you would need to be connected to a service coordinator. The service coordinator would come in, work with you on creating those goals, and help you kind of faci facilitate and manage connecting with the SCL, con the contracted agency, and, and working on those goals at that point in time. Um, and again, like in the North, there are some unique challenges for our folks as well. Uh, things like transportation are issues. Um, when you're in a rural community, you need to, if, you're, if you need to connect to, um, you know, a, a rehab support or uh, a, a, a specialist, something along those lines, it can be a little bit tricky if it's a three-hour drive, trying to figure out how you're going to get there. Things like um, figuring out whether that's something that's realistic for you or kind of tweaking the schedule to ensure that you can get there when you need to. Um, another thing that some of our folks try to decide is whether that's a priority for them. So there, there are some challenges that we see within our region, um, but again, with the service coordinator supports, we really do work on kind of trying to problem solve around that and figure out where you're at and, and what we can do to help. Um, so that's kind of all that I had for today. Uh, there's a lot of repetition between the, the information that's provided throughout the regions. Is there any questions? None for now, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you very much, Jen, and thank you for uh, sharing the um, supports and services that um, the agencies funded through the Alberta Brain Injury Initiative provide to uh, families and caregivers. They're really important part of the um, uh, uh, system of services that we provide. So, Our final presentation is from the Southern Alberta Brain Injury Society. They were not able to be with us today. However, they ha taped their presentation, and we'll play that for you now. You'll hear from Casey Pearson, Intake Coordinator and Case Manager, and Cheryl Sayward, a Program Manager at the Society. They will broaden the, r the discussion to speak about the range of challenges that survivors face and how SABUS partners with other agencies in the community to provide help. While they focus on the services within the City of Calgary, there are 14 agencies across Alberta that offer similar resources specific to your region. At the end of the webcast, we will provide you with the web address where you will find the complete list of provincial service providers who can assist you. Hello, I'm Cheryl Sayward. I'm the Program Manager with the Southern Alberta Brain Injury Society. And I'm Casey Pearson, Intake Coordinator and Case Manager with the Southern Alberta Brain Injury Society. At SABUS, we assist adults with an acquired brain injury with accessing available community resources within the Calgary region. We essentially assist them with navigating the system. During the intake, we discuss with survivors what their specific needs and goals are, and we work with them to achieve these. Two of the biggest needs survivors are looking for is assistance with housing and with income. Unfortunately, there aren't any specific brain injury housing besides some apartments with URSA that are very limited and you must meet their eligibility requirements. 
As for SABUS, we can assist with filling out applications to various different housing options. The most popular is Calgary Housing Corporation. Calgary Housing is owned by the City of Calgary to provide affordable housing situations to low-income citizens of Calgary. There are similar low-income housing options in the surrounding cities. If our survivors require less independent living options, such as personal care home, assisted living lodges, or long-term care, we would make a referral to home care to have assessments completed by their professionals to determine the most appropriate housing options available to them. There are many different shelters located within Calgary as well. The mustard seed is the one we most commonly work with. They help to meet the basic needs of shelter, food, clothing, and acceptance for individuals experiencing poverty and will work with them to find sustainable housing and employment. Income is also a need that we hear about often. There are different options for income resources depending on each situation. AISH, Assured Income for the Severely Handicapped, is the income source most used by our clients. AISH provides financial, supplementary, and health-related assistance to adults living with a disability that substantially limits their ability to work. The disability has to be permanent and all opportunities for rehabilitation and training have to have been exhausted. There's also CPPD, the Canada Pension Plan Disability Benefits. This is a taxable monthly benefit that is available to people who have contributed to CPP and who are not able to work regularly due to a disability. AISH and CPPD can be earned together, totaling a monthly income of $15.88. Our clients also access Alberta Works, which is a program that assists low-income Albertans to cover their basic cost of living. Alberta Works also offers employment services, employment and career resources, training opportunities, job fairs, and income support and health benefits. Survivors may have income from Workers' Compensation Board, WCB, long-term disability, a settlement from a lawsuit due to their injury, or insurance. Our clients also benefit from the Interfaith Food Bank for those months when they are having a difficult time or an extra expense has arisen. There must be a 30-day gap between hamper requests and Calgarians can self-refer to the food bank up to three times in a 12-month period. It must be referred by a partnering agency for any additional food hampers. Women in Need Society is also a great resource for our survivors. They will assist women and their families with addressing their immediate needs. WINS has four thrift stores, six resource centers, and also offer a free goods referral program as well as an employment program. Some of our survivors are able to return to work to earn an income, but require some assistance to be able to do this successfully. For this, there are three different organizations within Calgary that will offer help. Champions Career Center helps individuals with a disability prepare to find employment, further their education, and fulfill their career goals. Champions will provide comprehensive, integrated, and personalized support for individuals seeking career development or help in their current job. Prospect offers fast-track employment support for individuals experiencing challenges to work, forced participation as a result of a mental health or substance abuse disorders. Calgary Alternative Employment Services, CAS, assist job seekers to overcome barriers with employment. They help individuals to understand workplace culture and to fill personnel needs of inclusive employers in Calgary. CAS offers career exploration, career counseling, resume development, employment preparation, supported job search and placement, coaching and retention support. Oftentimes our survivors need to be assessed or reassessed to find out what programs would be most beneficial for them. In these cases, we would advise our clients to speak to their family doctors 
about a referral to the Calgary Brain Injury Program. Services such as assessments include neuropsychological assessments offered at the Brain Injury Program can only be done with a doctor's referral. For referrals such as community accessible rehabilitation or to see a social worker, Savis can make those referrals to the Calgary Brain Injury Program. We often brainstorm with them to determine the best route for our survivors. The Calgary Brain Injury Program is a central link for staff, patients, and caregivers to access updated information and to access programs and services across the Calgary Zone. Our clients are often in search of rehabilitation. There are different options for our survivors depending on their level of need and what their eligibility is. Community Accessible Rehabilitation, or CAR, is accessible with a referral form from a healthcare professional or through the Brain Injury Program. CAR is a healthcare team that helps people to manage their injuries or healthcare problems. CAR is a multidisciplinary team consisting of dietitians, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, recreational therapists, social workers, and speech language pathologists. There are three locations in Calgary. The Care West Dr. Vernon Fanning Center, which is also accessible with a referral from a healthcare professional, offers a day wellness program, continuing care services, and respite care. Community Neuro Rehab Services, or CNS, provides individuals and families with assessments and therapeutic interventions designed to enable survivors to meet their needs in the community. The Association for the Rehabilitation of the Brain Injured, RB, provides intensive community-based rehabilitation and family support. RB provides longer-term rehabilitation and they promote community participation. For pain management, our clients can speak to their family doctors for a referral to the chronic pain clinic and or the headache clinic to learn techniques and pain management. Both URSA Universal Rehabilitation Service Agency and Brain Injury Assist offer several rehabilitation services. Our association with them may, is mainly with their Supports for Community Living program. The SCL program is a short-term goal-oriented program to assist survivors with gaining or improving their daily living skills. Some examples of goals are home organization, menu planning, budgeting, and memory strategies. Both organizations also offer support groups. SABIS also offers six different peer support groups for our clients, three days per week, thir Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, both in the mornings and the afternoon. We offer arts and crafts, wellness and movement, stress management, living well with a brain injury, personal growth, and our survivor-led group, The Survivor's Perspective. And now I'll turn you over to Cheryl Sayward. Sometimes after a brain injury, survivors need some help with coping and understanding. Sabis do offer a six week support group for caregivers twice a year, usually April and October. The name of the group being Companions on the Road Less Travelled. This facilitated support group allows participants to share their experiences talk about the challenges specific to coping with a survivor of brain injury and develop healthy care skills. This support group is open to all unpaid caregivers, being friends, neighbours or family members of an individual with a brain injury. The survivor does not need to be a client of SABIS if a member of their family wishes to join our support group. I would like to end this by saying that some of the information that Casey and I have shared with you is available on the SABIS website at www.sabis.ab.ca or SABIS can also be contacted at 403-521-5212. Thank you. Thank you uh, to Casey and Cheryl for taping your presentation. 
In the interest of time, we've only shown you an excerpt of the presentation. The full video will be uh, posted at humanservices.alberta.ca backslash brain injury. In the remainder of the video, Cheryl shares supports for addictions, decision making, guardianship and emotion, emotional issues, among others. I'd like to say a big thank you to all of our presenters today. They included Michelle Hill, who is a service coordinator with Blue Heron Support Services, Mike Ryan, who is a client service manager at the Brain Care Centre, Jen Abu Alba is a program supervisor with the Canadian Mental Health Association in Red Deer, Casey Pearson is an intake coordinator and case manager with the Southern Alberta Brain Injury Society and our colleague Cheryl Sayward, program manager. And thanks to all of you who've turned into this webinar and spent the hour with us. We hope it's been informative. As I mentioned earlier, this is the final webinar in a series, a four-part series. Today's session was recorded and the video will be posted online at humanservices.alberta.ca backslash brain injury along with videos from all previous webinars. We will email you an evaluation form about today's webinar. Please take a minute to fill it out. We'd love to hear your feedback and it will really inform um, any planning for the future. To get updates about future webinar series, please email us at pdsi at gov.ab.ca. If you are interested in a similar webinar series, the next webinar hosted by Alberta Human Services by is on May 6th at 1.30 p.m. The topic is Employment for Youth with Disabilities. If you'd like to participate, please register for that webinar at humanservices.alberta.ca backslash EF, sorry, EF. We end this series with a web address where, where you can find a complete list of Alberta Brain Injury Network service providers across Alberta. The address is humanservices.alberta.ca backslash brain injury. Thank you again for joining us for this and all four webinar series.